insights into this very exciting um, subject. So my name is Tayo Richards. Um, I'm part of the TCRT team and I'm going to take you digital project management. Okay, so we're going to get st started straight away and um, and I'm going to Okay, I, I believe that I can I, I believe that I can manage to squeeze this um, session into an hour so that we can still keep to schedule. So let's go for it, okay? Please, uh, um, if you are, if you're not part of the, the lasso team, could you just mute your background? Whenever you come onto the session, just make sure that you're muted. Thank you. Okay, so just a bit about of myself so that you get a sense of who I am. My name's Taya Richards. You know, um, I've been in project management now really since 2005. You know, um, I started out running my own business um, from a business improvement perspective. Um, I've been in a number of um, I've been in a number of, um, I've worked in a number of industries, you know, um, consulting, public health, the leisure industry, you know, just honing my skills across those industries. Um, I'm accredited in change management, brings to an earned value management. Sorry, who is techno, whatever it is? Could you just mute your, 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 your microphone? You don't need to speak. <laughs> Just press mute on your microphone. Thank you. We really have to get that down to a T because what it does is that it really disrupts the whole session. Okay, so we've got to keep an eye on that. Yeah, so I've been mentoring and coaching and training in project management now for at least 10 years. You know, um, I have a number of accreditations in change management, Prince 2, earned value management. And just yesterday, I've been confirmed as a as a PMO certified practitioner. Um, and I'm just gonna give you a little insight into what a PMO means, what the, the word PMO means, because it tends to be used in a number of ways for different people. You know, so essentially I work on the project management support side of things. So I'm part of what would be called a project office or a program office or a portfolio office. So my job really is to come as part of that team and ensure that the project managers, project deliverers, all of the people who actually do the delivery, they have everything that they need. So that could be anything, you know, it could be systems, it could be tools, it could be documentation, it could be that they need to brush up on certain areas in project management. So you sometimes you will find me coaching or mentoring project managers. In some cases, I've had to mentor um, project professionals to move from one aspect of their career to, to another. So my, 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 my experience is quite varied, you know. Um, so that is just an insight. So PMO stands for, it could be the P, could be project, it could be program, or it could be portfolio. So that's a P and then, you know, MO is management office, you know, so some people may say PMO is project management officer, you know, people use it interchangeably. But for me, I'm more a person who works on the support side of things and my, my duties are very depending on what organization I go into and what they need from me. So that's why I call myself a PMO consultant. All right, so that's just a bit about me. You get to know more about me as we go along. So what are we gonna do today? So the name of this uh, program is, um, well, not the program, this segment that I'm taking you through is called Digital Project Management. So what we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with understanding what is project management. We'll get a few insights into that. Then we'll look at what digital project management is and then we'll look at some examples of um, digital project management um, skills and, you know, that kind of thing. You know, um, I also want to take you through how project management has evolved over the years so you can you appreciate um, how old this discipline has is. Okay, so let's get straight into it. All right, so what is project management? Okay, let's look, let's look at a couple of definitions. Right, so we're gonna put digital 
to, to, to the side for a minute and we're just going to look at what project management is. Okay, so when I give definitions, um, I try to go to um, professional bodies. Um, why is that? It's because out there right now, everybody has a perspective, you know. So what, be, be careful when you're searching out um, definitions of things or you want to find out more about a particular subject area, be aware that a lot of people write blogs. A lot of people are generating content these days. So they have a perspective, you know, so they've learned something and they're sharing it with everybody else, which is fantastic. But that, not, that isn't necessarily the official um, perspective, all right? Because the official perspective needs to be supported by research and that kind of thing. So be careful when you're doing that, especially when it comes to the, the area that we are going to be talking about. So business intelligence, um, data management is a relatively new discipline because obviously because of the digital explosion over the last 30 or so years. So be careful when you're looking for an official stance because people are giving their perspective, they're sharing content, they're, you know, they're generating um, traffic to their website. So therefore they're, they're sharing their perspective. So when I give definitions, I try as much as possible to look at what the professional bodies are saying. And the prof professional bodies that I tend to go to is APM. APM is the Association for Project Management. That's the chartered body for, project, uh, for the project professionals in the UK. Or I will quote from um, PMBOK, which stands for um, Project Management Body of Knowledge. And um, that is owned by PMI, which is based in the States. And the PMI stands for Project Management Institute. So let's look at APM's definition of project management. Project management is the application of processes, methods, skills, knowledge, and experience to achieve specific project objectives, okay? So that's the essence of project management. I want you to take note of it's an application of process. So it's not something, if you're managing a project, it's not something that you just jump into. There is a method, there are skills that are required, there's a knowledge, there's an experience. And, and to a certain extent, you know, if, you, if you've never managed a project before and you suddenly find yourself having to manage a project, then um, you're going to have to even be that bit more careful, all right? So in, in essence, we're talking about a discipline, all right? And now, for project management, you have to have project objectives. Um, in most cases, for a, very, uh, for, for a very good project that is being managed well, you have to have project acceptance criteria and they have to be agreed, with it, agreed within parameters. Now, why am I stressing this? Because there's a lot of times you will walk into an organization, bear in mind that when, sometimes when you are taken on as a project manager, Okay, you've applied for a role and you'll be taken on. In most cases, you will find that there's an issue. That's why you've been taken on as that project manager. Sometimes it means that they've just started from scratch and, um, and they want to recruit the team. Fine, but most, in most cases, there's a problem. So the best way to walk into a project management type situation is to be, it's to be, is to be ready with your own toolkit is to be, it's not, it's not to kind of like jump in and accept whatever's been given to you. You need to assess what's going on. And the only way you can assess it, if you have your own processes, you have your own methodology, you have a way of assessing what is being given to you in the first instance. That is why project management as a discipline is very important. Okay, so let's look at PMI's um, definition of project management as well Let me get over here okay so for pmi they're saying more or less the same thing as apm you know they're saying it's the application of knowledge skills tools and techniques to project activities so you apply those things to project activities to meet project um to meet project requirements okay so the most important things to to note there is the fact that you're gonna, if you're given a project, the project has objectives. If you as the project manager cannot clearly identify those project objectives, you need to be speaking to your project sponsor. 
Now, once you've identified your project objectives, the next thing would be to then clarify what, on what grounds will you accept that this project is done? So your idea of completion might be different from, the, from your boss's idea of completion. And that is why we have that word project acceptance criteria, okay? Here they've called it to meet project requirements. So whenever you, you, whenever you say, if you say to somebody said, oh, can you design a website for me? You know, that could be anything. So a website, well, what, what, how many pages? What do you want to use it for? That kind of thing. All of those, those conversations need to be clarified by acceptance criteria. Okay, so that just gives you kind of like a, an insight to what project management is all about. And it's a very, very, very high level insight. But all I wanted to point out there was that, you know, it's a discipline. There's a way and manner that you go around project management. Um, there's a, the, there are ways to approach it, but, you know, it's not something that you can approach in a haphazard way. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, now, the other thing I wanted to point out is that you walk into an organization and they'll tell you that you're the project manager for this particular activity. There are times when, um, so what I'm pointing out really is that whenever you walk into a situation and you are being given a role, there is a, a number of uh, things to kind of like bear in mind before you accept the role, all right? So for this thing to be a project, it has to be unique. What unique in what sense? If that organization creates paint, okay, they, they supply paint to the general public, you're, you're given a project, right? And this project is, is still doing the same thing, okay? So you've got to ask the question, well, how is this piece of work that you've given to me, how is it different from what we do as an organization? All right, because if it's an ongoing, um, it's an ongoing activity, that is what we normally class as BAU. BAU is business as usual. So what makes this particular project or this activity unique? Now, the reason why you have to ask that is that if it is ongoing and it's not about to stop or anything like that, then what is my goal? What is it that I'm, being, what is it that I'm, I'm looking after? What is it that you want me to achieve as a result of managing this activity? You know, and if you're happy managing the activity, that's not a problem, but you're not managing a project. Okay, so a project has to be unique from what the organization in question is delivering on a daily basis. It has to be transient. What does transient mean? Transient means it needs to have a time limit. If this piece of activity, you've walked into this organization, they supply paint to the general public, and this activity they've given you is also about supplying paint. Okay, fair enough. Um, so when does this particular activity end? So if it has no ending, again, you've got to ask them, are you sure this is a project? I don't see how this is a project, okay? So for, for, for a piece of activity be, to be classed as a project, it has to be unique. It has to have a time limit. Then it has to be undertaken to achieve planned objectives, okay? So if they've given you this piece of activity, Number one is still the same as what we do on a daily basis. Number two, it doesn't have, seem to have a time ending, okay? Number three, I can't seem to identify what you want to achieve. Why is this piece of activity different from what we do normally, okay? And that will then inform you in terms of outputs, outcomes, or benefits. Because if you're doing a project, Usually a project should be different from what that organization does on a daily basis, okay? It should have a time limit. It should be, you should be doing it for a reason. And there should be very specific outcomes or outputs. So output could be a product, outcomes could be a change, um, a, cha a, a change, okay? So it might be that the, the organization was um, doing things in a particular way. And now they want to change the way they do things. So say, for instance, they had a lot of, um, they send statements to their customers. They send that, they, they, they send that um, in a paper format. So they post the, the statements through the post. But now what they want to do is they want to change from doing that to just sending via email. 
or they even want to not even do email. They just want to set up portals for each of their customers and load the statements on there. That is going to change. That is a change. So that's an outcome. Okay, outputs tend to be tangible. They tend to be products. Outcomes tend to be like, it's just a different way of doing something. So it's not really tangible. You can't really see it, but it's just, it's a change nonetheless. And there has to be benefits. There are so many projects that everybody's so focused on the output or the outcome, they haven't thought about what the benefit is to the organization. So you'll find a lot of organizations spend millions of their money on something and they are not very clear as to why they sometimes they're clear on why they're doing it but they don't know how it's going to make things better okay so that is that is that okay so again let me give you some context okay i want to well i'm not, not going to go through all of this slide you know but what I'm trying to show is that this is so, so much a tried and tested discipline. It's evolved over centuries, okay? So, you know, the seven wonders of the world, you know, the great pyramids of Egypt or the uh, Great Wall of China, apparently they were managed from a project management perspective. Now, if you have a chance, go and Google what the pyramids look like. I mean, go and look at, see if you can find some pictures that have some detail look at the great wall of china i mean if you ever get the chance to, to 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 travel those are one of the places to go to go and see how that thing was put together there is no way that those pro those projects yeah they're projects they were put together without some sort of systematic way of approaching okay so a lot of people have done a number of research i don't want you to focus on the dates really because you'll find out that one person will say this was this happened in 1915 another person will say it's 1920 it's not really important what's important is you get a sense of how project management has evolved over centuries hundreds of years so therefore there are some elements of project management that are tried and tested okay you know, it's not something that is like, okay, you know, just thought of overnight, you know, and the, the, the whole arena around project management, particularly digital project management is evolving on a daily basis. So if we look at, um, let's look at some of these. So um, number six, for instance, this is when the critical path method was put together and the critical path is still used today. It's used in scheduling. And basically what happens is that you know, back in the day, they used to have to do that manually. But now we have tools that once you plot your schedule, you've put in all the tasks, you've put in the dates when they're likely to start to finish, you've created the relationship between each of those tasks. Once you've plotted all that information on tools like Microsoft Project, it will then show you the critical path. And what is the critical path? It's basically those projects, there's a path within a schedule that if those projects along that critical path should change, the schedule, on the, the, the schedule for the plan will also change. So it's all about, you know, so what the, the, what the tool will do for you is tell you that if you move this particular task, it will impact your timeline. So now what you have to figure out is what is it that I can move around that will not affect my timeline. So that is a um, critical path. All right, so let's look at number nine. Number nine is um, the Gant, Henry Gantt chart. This one here, this one that looks like an abacus. So Henry Gantt developed the popular Gantt chart. It's another scheduling tool, okay? And what does the Gantt chart do? What you're going to find when you are um, presenting to an audience, right? Like I'm doing to you guys now. If I had no pictures and all I was doing was just talking and talking and talking and all I was doing was showing you all the words instead of the pictures, what you're going to find is that you, um, you won't really grasp a lot of what I'm saying, okay? So now the Gantt chart, what happens is that you will have one part of the tool where you will enter all the information. The other side of the tool will have the Gantt chart and that is what really tends to really work for a lot of people, particularly senior stakeholders okay senior stakeholders whenever you're pre presenting to senior stakeholders whenever you're presenting to them they are very very busy people they're going from meeting to meeting to meeting 
you know so if whatever you are presenting to them is not visual enough you will find that there's a lot of things that they will miss out or they probably won't get and if they're disengaged they're just thinking about the next meeting they're going to go to so generally when you're presenting your schedule you want to have your gantt chart there it will highlight the main things it will highlight blockers it will highlight things that you know that are running in the past and all of that type of good stuff all right so that is the that is the essence of the gantt chart and that kind of like phenomena started round about you know the early 1900s all right um then there's scrum you know um scrum is an agile methodology that is a very recent way of managing projects okay so we are going to um in tcr2 we use we use a lot of agile um we have an agile way of thinking okay um, i'm not going to go too much into that right now because it's going to be a bit of a progression i'm going to you know share with that share you share more of that later but agile scrum apparently was um introduced in 1986 i beg to differ actually i don't think it was in 1986 i think it was more in the 2000s but again that's why i said do not be specific about the dates okay the dates are not important it's more or less the fact that okay this thing has been around for x amount of time it's evolving that kind of thing i just want to illustrate that and then we've got um i mentioned this today that's the project management body of knowledge this is created uh, this is um uh created by pmi project management institute which is based in the states that is kind of like the professional body for project management from uh from, and they are they are based in the states you know so they came about around this time supposedly you know um which other one should i point out and then prince 2 prince 2 um is predominantly used in the uk um that's that tends to be their go to um methodology uh for project management and what what prince 2 is known for is what they're saying essentially is that these are the processes these are the themes um these are the things that you really need to oversee and you can take what this framework and you can tailor it to work for you all right so again like i said the history of project management all i'm doing here is really showing you how old this discipline is i'm showing you how it's evolved over the centuries and i'm showing you the different elements this is not very conclusive there is a number of other milestones along the history of project management so that is uh that is kind of like a perspective and overview of how things have evolved over the years right so i'm going to i'm going to deal with questions as we're going so i think that's a good idea okay right all right let's go back let's go back let's go back all right you know what guys let's do questions at the end because i really want to see if we can get back into schedule we lost a lot of time when we began so okay so that's the history of project management that gives you a flavor of what's going on now digital project management what is that all about okay let's see so when you look online for the definition of project management you're going to find a lot of um, um professional bodies have a definition of project management now if you see where project management is coming from you can understand why they've had a lot of time to really think about it and say yes this is project management we believe we're all in agreement that this is what this means but when it comes to digital project management if you look at if you look if you try you do a general search you won't see a lot of results showing from professional bodies why is that it's because digital project management is when you think about how old digital project management is you know the management of digital type projects mobile apps you know um websites and all of that that's relatively new when you compare it to the great wall of china which was like centuries ago so i think the 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 project management community is still trying to come to a consensus over what that means all right but anyway i found a definition and reiki.com reiki.com they are one of the um tool suppliers for project managers and they say that digital project management 
as a, is, as a streamlined process is managing online projects from concept to completion. So concept is when you are really thinking, you're thinking about this idea, oh, wouldn't it be a good idea if we developed a mobile app that could look at the stars? The, the thing, when you start to think, that is the time to really get a sense of, does that really make any sense? Why would I need a mobile app that looks at the stars? That is at that stage, the concept stage, that you start to think about, okay, really? Do we really want to do something like that? And then you go all the way. So there's a number of, of, of phases and stages that you go through right until completion. So basically, right here saying that when you think about digital project management, it is the management of, of digital type projects. And the thing to bear in mind there is that it has to be within a budget and you will only be allowed a certain amount of resources. And the whole kind of like involvement is that as the project manager for a digital project, for, for a digital project, you're, you're talking about planning, delegating, tracking, reviewing, measuring results. And these are usually done by project management software. Okay. So now, because Reiki, Reiki sell project management software, that's why they've put that in there. Remember I was telling you before that when you're looking at definitions, be careful. Okay, so as far as they're concerned, they're trying to sell their product. They're, 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 they've written a blog, they've got their content, they're driving traffic to their website. So they're saying to you, like, if you really want to call yourself a digital project manager, then you really need to be doing that using project management software. And after that, there'll be a link to their product, and then they will start to talk about their product. Okay, so as you can see, it's not really an official definition, if you like, but it's a definition, it gives you an idea of what it's about okay so really simply put okay once you understand what project management is all you need to do is slot in you slot in digital and you're thinking okay i understand what project management is so the the things that we're going to be focused on when we're talking about digital project management will be of a digital nature that's all really but i had to give you some background context to really get you into that place all right okay so let's see let's see so we were supposed to start at 10 um i was supposed to finish at 11 30. i think i can I, I can make it okay so we can just so we can get back onto schedule again all right okay so i'm going to give you some examples of digital projects all right we got websites we got mobile applications online videos games content so content right is basically when people want to take, you know, they want to drive you to their, to their website or they want to bring you to their Instagram page or they want to bring you to their Facebook page or their Twitter handle, they write stuff, right? And that stuff is called content. So we, now that we are in the digital age, a lot of people are writing a lot of stuff. So whenever you are trying to understand about a concept, you're trying to learn about a concept, you've got to be able to really look um, across a very broad way, look broadly across and, and try to pick out the similarities. Because what that person is essence is doing, they've learned something, they've decided that they want to elaborate more on that, they have a website, you know, so they're going to talk about it. And once you click on it, you'll say, oh, this is a very inter interesting blog, Oh, wow. Who, who talked about this? You click on their link. It takes you to where they ultimately want to take you. All right. So they may want you to, you know, they may be, they may be, um, they may be, um, they, they may be people who are advertising for a particular organization. So they're being paid for the traffic or they want to sell something. So they want you to come and see that thing. So they've written something, okay? So um, that's content. E-commerce, you know, so that's a digital type of project. Now what happens, you know, over the years now, like if you're an organization, a big organization, and you do not have a way for us, the general public, to buy your things, it's like, seriously, what kind of company is this? We can almost, even argue that you don't seriously you, you you you're not you're highly unserious if you do not have an e-commerce type situation where we can click and buy and get it delivered it's like no i don't even think so 
All right. So that so if you are if you are invited as a project manage, manager or you're invited as a part of a team of, of, of project professionals where you guys have to deliver an e-commerce solution, that's what is meant by e-commerce. Okay, and then you've got social media. Oh my goodness, guys, in terms of social media, you want to see how children, yeah, I'd say children, from the ages from about what, 17 to 21, are running businesses from a social media perspective. They go out there, they, you know, they do vlogging and, you know, you're watching them. And as you're watching them, YouTube and places like that are paying them for, you know, bringing you to that, to that website. And they get paid a lot. I was watching a video that was maybe two, three weeks ago about a particular lady. And she actually shared how much YouTube um, pays her. Um, I can't remember the stats. Maybe one of these days I'll take you through the stats. It's a lot of money. And it wasn't in Naira. I can tell you that. Okay. So that's another digital project. So you could actually be approached as someone to, can you manage my social media presence? You know, so every organization, individuals even have a social media presence and they want somebody to come along and help them manage that. So that's an example of a digital project because there'll be a digital element to it. All right. You know, the platforms you're going to use and everything. And there's digital advertising and then there's search engine engine optimization. OK, so those are examples of projects that are digital. And when we talk about digital project management, that's the context. Why, does, why is it necessary to point that out? It's because project management is huge, you know, um, building bridges, roads, um, airlines, whatever it is, if you are building something massive or particularly strategic to that organization, the best approach is to go through a project management approach if it carries a lot of risk, if something should go wrong. So for instance, if you're building a bridge in Lagos State, that's not the kind of thing that all of you get together, you know, have a little bit of a chat, write something down and hey, we're gonna build a bridge. No, no, that could, why is that? Because building a bridge, if it goes wrong, there's huge risk. So if there's huge risk, if it costs a lot of money, if it's going to take a lot, um, um, a specific amount of resource to that organization, then you need a very methodical and proven way of delivery. Okay, so that's the difference between, you know, project management and digital project management. And that's not to say that the same does not apply to digital projects. Okay, because if you are part of a team who is managing the website for one of the biggest hospitals in Nigeria, okay? Somehow they have, as part of their digital presence, they have particular aspects of their, their operation online that needs to be up, up, that needs to be up and running all the time. That's very critical to what they do. So there's a risk there. If things go wrong, it goes wrong very badly. So it doesn't really matter. It, it's, sometimes it's not about money. If there's connection to human life, then that's critical. And this is why we study project management and we, and we really imbibe it on a daily basis. How am I doing for time? 11, 11, good. Okay, good. All right, so um, these are the kind of skills. These are some examples of skills for, project, uh, for digital project management, okay? So I remember I was telling you about content. You know, if you, if, you, if you are somebody who, for instance, you want to really focus on the social media kind of things, you're very creative, you've got to learn how to write content, okay? You know, some people, you read their blogs and they just go on and on. It's like, dude, I don't have all morning, okay? Get to the point, let me see what you're saying, okay? That's a skill. You have, in order for you to write for an organization, right, to be able to draw people in and really um, understand what's going on on that particular site so you can go and click the magic button to buy there is a particular way of doing that so it's a skill okay being able to write copy they call it copy or content being able to write it edit it so that grammatically makes sense okay um, and also really being able to write and edit I don't even know whether or not we're taught our indigenous languages in Nigeria do we have any websites that have indigenous language? 
Okay, are there any websites out there that are written in Hausa, Yoruba, um, Igbo? Do you understand? That kind of thing. We should, in Nigeria right now, be thinking about cartoons in indigenous language. Okay, because language, being able to master a language, it actually shows a high intelligence. Not everybody can master languages quickly and efficiently. So when you have language, if you have a very, if you're very good at language, then you have a, it, it's a, it's it, it shows a high level of intelligence. So I don't see why we shouldn't be able to develop content around that. All right. So being able to write, to engage, to connect with people, very good skill to have. Okay. Um, HTML, um, CSS. Okay. Now these are languages. For the internet all right the ability to write in html allows you to help designers or developers they, they it ha allows you to communicate with them okay so if you as a project manager right understand html and css those two languages when you speak to the people who are developing your your, your website it makes for a, for a better uh, relationship. So if you're a project manager and you don't really understand what your developer is talking about or your designer is talking about then you've got a bit of a a challenge there because things will not move as quickly because if they're going like you know this that and the other html css and they do you know they go on with the code and you're thinking i don't, I don't really get what you're saying okay so that slows things down so if you as a project manager you want to go into digital project management and you understand those languages that would work very well so i'm not going to go into each one of these because the in terms of a skill set for a digital project manager it is wide Okay, this is just the flavor, get you a, give you a sense of the kind of things that could be happening. If you look at um, the, if you refer back to the slide that I was just showing you about the type of digital projects that they are, you know, if it's online, this applies more to those things. Okay, but it will be my colleagues that will really take you through those technical type of things. All right, my job really is to really help you understand the management and the control and the monitoring of your projects. All right, I'm also gonna talk about interpersonal skills. You know, so work skills, having work skills is fantastic. You know, having um, those technical skills, very good. However, a successful project manager is someone who has fantastic presentation skills, as in they can, get an audience, they know the kind of audience that they've got and they can present to them effectively. You know, so if you are presenting a concept, you know that these are senior people, you are going to present from that perspective. You're not going to start going into detail, okay? Because all you want them to do is to get the concept and bring out the money, okay? So you understand that and you're able to present in that way. Being able to come up with visuals like this, being able to use PowerPoint, Adobe, these kind of things these days, very important if you are going to present, okay? Um, eye for detail, being able to negotiate, okay? Having a very positive outlook, even when things are not going so well, being able to engage your team, being able to boost morale, being able to encourage them, bring them together. If you're a snappy person and you think that in this day and age, you're going to, you're going to manage a team by being um, forceful, by being uh, intimidating, please, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, maybe they might respond to you, but trust me, they're only bringing, bringing like less than 50% to the table. You are not encouraging them to go beyond the call of duty. Now, that is the mark of a fantastic project manager. That project manager is engaging, they are nice, they are kind, but they are firm, you know? They are firm, they are like, no, sorry, you can't do that. But they're not rude, they're not intimidating. They do not step out of line. That is the mark of a fantastic project manager, okay? Right, so I'm going to round up now so I can give you um, some time to ask any questions and then we're gonna quickly go over to my colleague who's waiting on the other line. I've kind of like broke, uh, I've really slimmed down the presentation because we really did start late, you know, um, and I really want us to keep the schedule. So I'm gonna leave you with two things, okay? How does digital project management relate to this program? 
Now, this program is called Business Intelligence and Data Management. Now, business intelligence and data management are two elements of um, the digital um, um, transformation that's going on in our world right now. So the essence, the reason why we are showing you this and what digital and what project management does is that if you go into a situation whereby you are asked to manage an outcome that involves business intelligence, that involves um, data management, you will have the right management skills to start from A and land at Z. Or in some cases, you might have to start from K and land in Z. Or you might have to, you know, the idea is that you have the right skill set to manage these things. Business intelligence is very interesting, very, very, very innovative. But if you do not understand management, you may find yourself in difficulty. All right. So digital project management in this program is about helping you to understand the management side of things so when you listen to my colleague gaston he's going to tell you about big and about big analytics you know what the possibilities are visualizations you're going to be like ooh and ah however being able to deliver those things for an organization totally different Totally, totally different ball game. You're going to hear about business analysis. You're going to hear about what is going on out there in terms of um, GDPR. You know, so if you're asked to come into an organization, I don't know how um, how GDPR is is working in Nigeria right now, but here, you know, every other thing. Whenever we say anything that's like, oh, you got to think about the GDPR element of that. So if you were called into an organization in Nigeria now to say, okay, please come and help us imp implement our GDPR strategy, that's when you need project management. That's when you will remember what Tayo was talking about. Okay? So that's the first thing. Now, the best way to get, um, to get the best out of this program is when, people sh when we share things with you. When the, those of us come and we share things with you, go and do your own research. Find out what's going on. What we shared with you is probably what, like 2%, 3%, you know, from our own perspective and really just bringing it down to a level because this is the first time that you guys will encounter this. So go out there. Instead of, you know, doing the Snapchatting and doing the Instagramming and Facebooking, go onto YouTube. Find out what's going on in that, um, in that area. What is the cutting edge? So what, is, what, is, what, what are the conversations around that today, okay? Things, you know, when it comes to digital project management, innovation, the things that we're going to share with you in TCRT, textbooks don't cut it. Because at the time when they wrote that textbook, that information has become then. Only, only God knows what is going on today when it comes to that particular issue. So those are the two things I'm going to leave with you. Um, we've got 10 minutes. If you have any questions, let me have those questions now. And then we're going to switch over to uh, my colleague Gaston. Okay? So let's see if you have if you have any questions, let's have it. Otherwise, I will catch up with you the next time. But I'll give you a few minutes. You've got some minutes to put any questions that you have together. Um, otherwise, you know, don't feel pressured. Do we have any questions? Please just raise your hand. Yes, sir. Right there. Yeah. 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 I will say it in the Okay. <laughs> Sorry, um, Olumide, right? Yes. Basically, you can have the slides for your email. But um, we will discuss internally to know how we can communicate it to the students. That's why we're having this session. Any other question, please?
Una masala Any other question? I'm typing the response to it. When you want to put your program activity, something that you cannot hear can pass on here. What is the difference between what? Project program activity. Okay, there doesn't seem to be a lot of questions. So, um, like I said, I want to really keep to time. So, if you have any questions, let the sorry, could you mute? Could you mute the the microphone again, please? Thank you. Okay, I've seen a question here. Could, could we mute the microphone, please? Okay, so we've got here. What's the difference between? Sorry, could you please mute the microphone? I can hear you speaking. Could you mute your microphone, please? That would be me. You've got to be really careful. <laughs> Okay. All right. We're gonna. Don't worry. We'll get the hang. Who has unmuted their microphone? Come on. Let's do this quickly. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. So um, I've got here. Is project management a position in companies or firms? So being a project manager is a position. The whole discipline around it is management, so project management, okay? Um, can I expect to see an ad on the dailies requesting that a, a firm seeks? Yes, you can. You can expect to see that, okay? And that's what we're preparing you for. But right now, if you've never done it before, please do not apply for a role yet. You know, one of the most devastating things that can happen in your professional career is to go through an experience where, because you are unaware of what you're taking on, you, you, you essentially, you know, you essentially fail. It stays with you for such a long time and it really damages your confidence. Okay. So at this stage, you know, you guys, most of you are, are undergrads and that kind of thing. Now this is the stage to look for possible volunteer positions. You know, once you've got done the six weeks program, if you've done the six weeks program, you've started to come onto our platform for hands-on type of experience. 
you know, you've got a sense of, you know, you've got the sense of the basics, then you can go and start looking for a volunteer role where you can just observe, see how they're doing things. Google, can you come can you come because it's just I'm just gonna go straight in. They don't need any of this. So if you can get get um, no, get that no, way. No. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. Tell you, carry on. Okay. Yeah, thank so, you. So um have so, a look at some of the questions there also. I think uh, they put it like a privately. So you may not see them. Um, All want right. To chat, want to chat? Want to chat about that as well? All right, not a problem. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to answer the ones that I can see, and then I'm going to hand over to you because I want to keep us on track. All right. Um, okay. So yes. Yeah, so as I was saying, once you've done the six weeks program with us, you've got. You've, got, you've had a chance to be part of the hands-on type um, training that will follow. That is the time to start looking for a volunteer role, okay? Unless you're working in, in that organization for some time and you probably have, you know, a flavor. Maybe you guys are doing project management in your companies, but you want to really heighten what you, um, heighten your knowledge. That's when you can really be looking for a project management role. But if you've never done it before, and you, uh, you've done six weeks and you've done like uh, um, some hands-on work with us, then you can start look for looking for a volunteer role, all right? So, because there's a lot to it, all right? So, and you know, if, 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 there, if an opportunity comes up, you know, by all means, get in touch, let's discuss the possibilities, let's see whether, you, you know, you might be a genius or something, so we don't know, we, you know, so you might be able to handle it. But in most cases, more often than not, you know, um, don't start looking in the dailies for at least three months. All right. Um, what is the difference between a project program and activity? Well, an activity is just um, something that is going on usually. If you go into an organization now, whatever they do on a daily basis. So if they sell um, material, if it's a, it's a, if it's a, um, you know, those ladies that sell material in um, those, you know, those big markets, whatever the case may be. What, what she's doing, selling those materials, selling, selling the laces, the Ankara, selling all of those things, that's her activity. So she's now not gonna come call you and say, oh, you're going to be my project manager. If all you are doing is selling the Ankara, selling the lace, you are not a project manager. Don't let her deceive you, okay? So, but if she calls you in to say, please help me to set up my website, then you can call that a project. Please, can you mute yourself? Come on, we need to get we get we need to get a handle on this. Very distracting. Gaston, you're gonna need to mute yourself as well. Your your background is very noisy. Okay, right. Um so as I was saying, so if you are a if you are called by this lady, she sells material, she sells Ankara, she sells lace, she sells all these things, and she calls you in to come and help her to sell the lace and the Ankara, that is not project management, because that's what she does usually. There's nothing, you know, she can call it whatever she likes, it can be however millions of Naira she likes, it's still not a project. But if she calls you in to say, please come and help me set up and create my online presence, you know, I want you to set me up a website. I want to be able to sell my Ankara, my lace. I want you to hook me up onto Instagram and YouTube videos and all of that. Now we are talking. That is a project. That is not an activity. Okay. So um, I hope, and now if you're not, so a digital project is the website element. So say for instance, she, she called you in and she said, please, my shop is looking very shabby. Okay. I want to renovate. You're still a project manager, but you're not a digital project manager. Why? Because it's not online. It's got nothing to do with the internet. It's not digital in nature. It's got no mobile application. You know, it's got nothing to do with that. So that's not a digital project. But you're still a project manager because you have to, you know, you have to create this new ambience for her shop. You understand? So it's a project. You have to start it and you have to finish it. She's going to give you a fixed amount of money, fixed amount of resources. She's going to ask you to come up with a concept. And that's a project, okay? A digital project is something that has to do with something online. Does that make sense? Hopefully that does. 
Okay. All right. So that hopefully that does. Now, any other questions, guys? Let our representative. Ugh, sorry. Any other questions? Please pass them on to our rep that's um, online um, on ground with you there. He or she will get it to us, and we'll make sure that those questions are answered. Gaston, over to you. Have a good day, everyone. It was really nice to speak to everybody. Speak to you soon. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So um, I'm going to share my screen. OK. So what we're going to do straight to the point. Um, <clears throat> and then. Um, yeah, you can see my screen. If you can see my screen, let me know. Um, that would be good. Uh, I think uh, uh, one of you is on a video, so it's, it's okay. It could be just on audio, would be good. Okay. Can you see my screen? So uh, if you can see my screen, then uh, I'm just going to start. Let me see who is on the video right now. So, Sinapong, uh, 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 Mayon, you are on video. So, uh, if, is that okay? I can just uh, stop video. Okay. So, yeah, fantastic. Um, you might be distracting others, so um, if you can be off the video, that would be great. Thank you very much. Okay, so my name is Gaston. Uh, some of you already actually spoke to me. Some of you may have already seen me. Um, let me see quickly here. Okay, so um, actually I'm logging from Manchester, uh, UK. And then uh, today I'm gonna be taking you through this um, presentation quickly. Uh, but then some of you wanted to start right away, which is fantastic. So be ready. I will be giving you also a software, uh, which you're going to start with from today. So I don't want to distract you. So I'm going to go straight to the presentation. Thank you. So my name is Gaston. I'm a data scientist. Uh, uh, graduated with mechanical electrical quantity surveying. Um, my master's of research focus on the use of qualitative and quantitative statistical analysis of thermal mass to improve the energy efficiency in both residential and commercial structure in the UK. And uh, financial risk management, mathematics with the emphasis in a statistic and algorithm. Um, I'm an enthusiastic and highly capable data scientist who is extremely passionate about deriving and implementing machine learning algorithm from scratch to solve businesses problems and driven decisions making with the strong career focus, uh, customer centric analysis and initiatives. Awesome. So um, this is uh, my background and this is what I do. So there is a lot content that I'm going to give out right now. So I have about uh, one hour and a half possibly to go. So uh, stay with me and then we're going, to, uh, we're going to carry on. Thank you. So um, what is the data science really? This is a new stuff. This is a new topic. Uh, this is a new technology. Uh, in order for me to actually present to you and you can grasp it, it's better that I start with simple definition even. Uh, if you understand the theory of something, uh, the definition, then you will be in a good position to dig down a little bit to understand uh, more uh, or on the subject. So my definition, data science uh, in industry is, is the application. That's the word. It is the application of scientific method to a business. It is assumptions and its processes. I like that. So we form hypotheses to find out what our client's hypotheses are. And we test this hypothesis against data to see whether they are supported. And we don't actually favor any hypothesis ever. So we simply seek to find out the truth in the data. 
that's 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 our job okay so if a hypothesis it is not supported by the data we must reject it all right so um we also seek a new uh, questions and forms a new hypothesis based on what we find in the data sometimes they give you a data and they tell you something we want to we want this information okay and if the data does not give you that signal you just tell them that there's nothing much i'm going to do with your data the, 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 your data does not have that signal so you reject their hypothesis they are coming with big uh sometimes with big expectation and yet the the way they capture the data very poorly captured and does not have the signal so you reject their hypothesis and you're probably gonna help them to uh, get more data source from the external and uh, you will blend that data in order to deliver something so this picture here uh, i got it from from the um, google so you google data science you're going to see these things uh here and then uh, uh some of you are in a great positions very very good positions to do data science or data analytics because it require it require maths and statistics okay it, it is it, it is it is um the truth of it you you don't need to say well i i'm not i'm not mathematicians or i'm not uh statisticians and things like that but it is it requires numbers if you can count money count money like uh uh 100 uh, naira 200 naira 400 naira million naira you can count this if you can count that this is actually statistic this is actually a mathematics but you were not you were not uh told that is a number you know everybody has numbers if you if you you, you know uh went to the shop buy something and and, and expect um this Till lady or gentleman to give you change back, you're actually a number person. You, you, you maybe you don't know, so you you know what change you're expecting. Okay, so that it is the numbers. That's the maths. It, it is this maths uh, that is not a heavy heavy maths, guys. So that it is that it is what you need: computer and science and IT. Okay. I believe most of you have phone, mobile phone, okay? Computers there, it is actually to do with any device, okay? Uh, any device like a phone, tablet, uh, IT, information technology, yeah? Um, if you can manipulate something on your mobile phone, you likely is the person who can do data, okay? Um, this is it, it doesn't take that much. Uh, some of you have so much knowledge that you've not been told about what capable you can do with that knowledge. And then it's there, dormant. It's not doing anything. It's not generating money. So um, many of you have mobile phone. And if you can use a mobile phone, you have, you have far more better skills to do data uh, analytics or data science. A domain like a business knowledge, OK? A business domain knowledge you want to set up a company you want to run a project and you are expecting to make a profit okay not many people have that kind of thing like an entrepreneurial mindset uh, but this is we will teach you all of this that's that's um, so uh, that's what make these skills this this integrated these things uh, make you a good data science a data scientist or data analyst Good. So as a data scientist, uh, what is your role? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? If I don't tell you right now, you're going to say, well, what, what, what is the things I'm supposed to be doing as a data scientist or as a data analyst? Okay. So you identify questions and problems. You actually love problems. <laughs> you're not going to run away from problems this time. You actually love problems. Let them bring problems. Yeah. Then, oh, we got a problem here. We got a problem here. This is the time you showed up. You say, bring it in. What is your problem? So actually, you are 
a problem solver. You're actually a solution to a company. And you identify, you derive appropriate analysis, okay? You identify and def define data requirement, right? Data requirement. Um, you acquire necessary data sources, internal or external. Like I was saying earlier to you, uh, sometimes they bring data to you and has nothing in it. Oh, so so um, you you will be in a position to acquire external data uh, uh, down the line. Well, we probably I probably show you where to get external data and things like that. Uh, if your company ever ever wants something and the data is poorly captured and you need external data, they got big vision uh, expectation and the data do not have signal. You say, don't worry about that. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll bring you more data, external data, so that I can blend it and, and, uh, and get something out of it. So prepare data for analysis. You perform analysis, and then you, com you communicate analysis and result back to the stakeholders. OK, that's what you do. That's your role. That's your role now. OK, so uh, you perform analysis. You create visualizations, yeah? that shows trend pattern in the data. You create a visualization that will con conclusively support or disrupt hypothesis. Okay, so you, you perform actually statistical hypothesis tests. You identify key performance indicators within the industry. You identify and drive new performance indicators when needed. You build an intra uh, and interpret models for business process. Good, so uh, data scientists role continue you communicate with the stakeholders uh, these stakeholders actually literally become uh, like your friend because they have serious problem then all of a sudden you are the guy who actually trying to figure it out and give them solutions so you communicate with this guy in a regular basis stakeholders are the reason you got a job so uh, you need to uh, uh, you need to know um, uh, uh, about, the, about the analysis and, and communicate back to them. So remember the stakeholders uh, are usually not data scientists or mathematicians or even not particularly technical. These guys, for whatever reason, they got the company, okay? <laughs> they got a company, they are there, all right. So they don't know much about maps. They don't know much about data science. They don't know much about technical things. So um, when you're talking to them, you, you're going to keep things simple. Okay, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Stick to the fact. That's it. You stick to the fact. You just make them, um, you manage their expectation. That's the word. So when discussing project goals and possibility, it is very important that you manage their expectation. Um, uh, what is, is possible. Good. So um uh there are sub discipline in data science yeah uh this is data engineering and then data engineering tools so the data engineering sometimes we call them data architects okay we're not going to teach you that we are teaching you the analytic side of it but i should still show you a bit uh, in this data science there are sub disciplines okay so data engineering uh, and in the data engineering, uh, these guys are data architects, okay? So uh, they design big data system, okay? Sometimes it's called the ETL. Uh, ETL uh, stands for extract, transform, and load. These guys here actually designed this, okay? These guys are data engineers. They optimize the performance of the ETL pipeline, okay? So um, the tools that they use, they use things like a Hadoop, okay, Spark, SQL, a Scala, Python, okay. Uh, some of these also, you a data scientist, you will be using them uh, as well. Data science subdiscipline. That's where you coming in. You are coming in where it say data analytics, okay. You are coming in in uh, in, in 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 this subdiscipline called data analytics. So. Uh, as data analytic, your skills you need is the mixture of business uh, and then analytic thinking, okay? Uh, like I've showed you earlier in that picture. Uh, so you need the statistic, optimization, business domain knowledge, 
uh, programming. Uh, I, I believe yesterday or the day yesterday, somebody was asking about programming. Uh, we'll teach you programming. Okay, statistic, you already have that. You already have statistic. Um, um, you can count the money. No one will say me, I can't count the money. If you, if you can count the money, you, 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 you got the numbers. It, it is just, it's just a matter of we telling you that you have these skills and then it will be uh, emphasized. It will be awakened in you and then uh, you, you, you'll be conscious of it. Yes, you'll be conscious of it. So um, this is what you need. So the purpose is to make the ETL pipeline into an asset for a business by extracting actionable insight from the data. Good. So uh, what are the tools are you gonna use? You're gonna use R, R programming language, okay? You're gonna use another one called Python, Python programming language. Uh, LaTeX, not, not really. So you're gonna use data visualization packages and tools. Uh, ggplot in R, uh, Matplotlib and Seaborn in Python, and Tableau. Tableau it is going to be a, a, a big one actually for you. Um, so uh, we will start with, with, with Tableau today, live actually. Good. So uh, data analytics, you can be called yourself data scientist or data analyst. Okay. Uh, how deeper do you want to go? Um, if, you, if they give you some of the skills, some of the tasks um, that does not require really uh, machine learning or anything like that and they, they you, you're like um, you're like a junior data scientist do you understand and they call you data analyst something like that uh, so data scientist okay you you're you're an end user of etl pipeline you create data visualization that reveal the truth about a business and it is processes that's right so you share hidden and useful insight with decision makers okay you define the uh, KPIs, okay, key performance indicators. Companies, sometimes they don't know where they are. They don't know where they want to go. Um, uh, with, 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 they don't know. Uh, uh, I'm okay to keep going. I'm okay to keep going. Let us know. So, so uh, you're going to tell them, you're going to define their KPIs. Um, and, and, and you tell them where you are right now uh, and, and then where you want to be tomorrow, okay? Or in five years coming, you do a prediction analysis and you forecast. These guys um, uh, want to grow, okay? And you tell them where based on the data that they collected or based on the performance. As a data scientist, you design and build a machine learning algorithm, okay? Uh, so um, we keep going. Uh, stay, stay just on video if you can. Uh, instead, you're gonna distract others. Yeah. So data scientists, uh, algorithm usually embedded within some of the software application. Correct. Okay. So um, I've talked about data, data, you know, um, and this is what it is all about. Um, so stay muted. I mean, stay just on audio, which is good because because you might distract others. Because um, if you are on video, you might be distracting others. Okay. So uh, I J T George George, stay on audio, please. Uh, George, can you hear me? Stay on audio. You are on video currently. Uh, if you can, I can just stop you from yeah fantastic okay good so so data actually uh, a big data the term big data describe a large volume of data all right so both structured and unstructured uh, that inundate a business on a day-to-day -day basis okay so uh, but it is not actually the amount of data that is important okay uh, it is what company do with the data that is that that matters. Okay, I'm reading from here, guys. So, so when you hear big data, it is the volume. That's not really this is this definition came from uh, these guys. The very very um, uh, this is data scientists. Uh, it, it is just a large volume. There is no 
no uh, way of uh, say, okay, which one is a small data and which one is a big data? You, you see it? So uh, it's just a large volume of data that inundate businesses. Big data can be extracted, analyzed, uh, and manipulated. Guys, I'm reading from here. Uh, and then uh, for insight, you need to make an informed decision. Okay, so the source of big data really fall on onto this. Okay, so the big data we're talking about here generally fall into these three categories, stream data, streaming data. Okay, you got a website, you got a website and um, or CRM. Okay, and then uh, there is a daily basis uh, data is coming in, uh, and this data we talk data is actually a value. Okay, value uh, uh, geography is to do with your, your, somebody's name. Okay, somebody's name, somebody's uh, telephone number, somebody's address. Okay, uh, uh, that is this 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 uh, values that can be can be um, quantitative or can be uh, uh, qualitative, uh, we call it data, all right? So it, it, is, not, it, it is not something um, that, just, that just started uh, uh, today. The name actually data science started very, very recent in 2008 by mathematician uh, Dr. Patel, but uh, data, it is just your name, you know? is your name, your, your address, your telephone number, your uh, date of birth. If, if a company got that, this is pure money. They got the money. You might be thinking like, ah, it doesn't matter, I'll give them my name. But they know how valued that is. If you don't know the value of, of what you have and somebody else knows it, that person is going to turn that thing into pure money, you know? Uh, and that's the truth. That's the truth of it. Okay. Publicly available sources like the US government, CIA, uh, World Face, uh, Factbook, EU Union, Open Data Portal. So you can, you can, these are all big data. Uh, I haven't finished this yet. Let me just quickly. Yeah. Okay. So big data, big data now, you might be thinking like, uh, 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 this big data things, um, wh where, where else can we see the big data? Uh, I can guarantee you right now that it affects organizations across practically every industry. Banking, they are hammered by big data. How many customers bank, banks have? Just big data, okay? Education, like your university currently now, they're dealing with big data. Government, the government uh, with all the, 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 the government system, does government has a system can capture all the data if he, if he has, even, even if he's doing on a paper, okay? It's a still a big data, okay? Healthcare, okay? Uh, is people going to hospital, yes or no? This, 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 this is people um, trying to buy something from pharmacy uh, or clinic or something like that, yes or no? Okay, every day, every day, every day they keep going there. And these people are capturing they, their name. What is your name? They ask you, what's your name? Even they know your name, okay? The doctor, just yesterday you went there, he knows your name. Today you went back and asked you again your name. What's your name? You tell him his name. You write it down. What's your telephone number? He write it down. Um, what's your uh, first name, surname? You write it down. What's your address? You write it down. These are all values. To them, is a value thing. You thought they they marveling you, asking you a stupid question. You asked me yesterday my name. Um, today again, you ask me the same thing. Even tomorrow, you keep coming. They ask you the same thing. Manufacturing, okay? Retail, real estate, oil and gas, telecommunication, big data actually affected all this organization. Beautiful. So let's see uh, 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 um, uh, oops. Okay. So so it, it, it is it, it is um the big data actually uh, the importance of big data doesn't really revolve uh, around how much you have, you see. 
You see, some people got a lot of data. Are they maximizing it? Are they taking, are they really um, doing something about this big data? Stay muted. Uh, are you Tola? I'm going to mute you. Uh, are you Lola? Stay muted, please. Okay, good. Fantastic. So the importance of big data, uh, if you have big data and it's not making you money, uh, uh, is not, is, is not important. <laughs> it, it, it very important, but you're not maximizing. It's like a guy that got, got uh, this example here. I, 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 I don't want to use it, but I want to use it because it makes sense in this, in this, in this scenario. You've got a gun. Okay. You got gun. Do you understand gun? The weapon, okay? You got a weapon, you got the bullets in it, okay? And if you don't know how to shoot that, that weapon, you got it. You got a bullet in it. And, and if you don't know how to shoot, you, you're not a dangerous guy. You, you are not dangerous. Somebody can come and do anything with you. You're not dangerous. But what if you got that weapon, okay, that, that gun, you got it, you got the bullets in it, and you know how to shoot. <laughs> Boy, you dangerous guy. You are dangerous. Likewise, the company, they have, they have data. They capture it, right? And they don't, now they don't know how to do the analytics. They don't know how data analytics comes in. And that's where the problem is. They're not dangerous. They're not maximizing it. That data is not making them money. But yet, they have it. So, so uh, you can take a data from any source. Guys, I'm reading from here. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a lot of things that I put it together for you. So you can take data from any source uh, and analyze it and find answers that enable a smart decision making. That's it. Cost reduction, time reduction, new product development, and optimize existing product. Solve problems, improve users' experience, improve conversion to increase return on investment. You know the analytic, you are coming stronger and, 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 and you're dangerous in a good way. I mean, you're dangerous, positive dangerous. <laughs> yeah, dangerous not, in this dangerous I'm talking about here you, you, is, is a positive dangerous. Because you can turn things into, into something, you wow your manager, you wow your CEO, you wow the, the organization, the whole organization. The people who are using data today, company, they, they start and they can't even comprehend how fast they're going. Sometimes they say like, hmm, this thing is so, is so, is a mind blowing. That's right. That's right. Because um, the data, when you do the analytic, you know exactly what to do. You're not trying, you see? And you can reduce time. You can reduce costs. Your existing product that already you have, you can enhance it, you can improve it. And this alone can increase the return on investment for an organization. Last year, they make a negative cash flow. What if this year they have a positive cash flow and has, has potential, because you're gonna do forecasting, has potential that they're gonna, they're gonna do, they're gonna increase on return on investment. Will they keep you? Will they let you go? Or will they even uh, acquire more data scientists? Obviously, they will have them more. Doesn't matter how much expensive they are, they're gonna acquire them more. Yeah, so visual, visual analytics. Visual, guys, I'm reading from here. Visual analytics have proven especially hot. Hmm, that sounds good. Forbes recently ranked Tableau as the technical skill with the third biggest rise in demand. You guys know Forbes. Let's see what they're saying. Forbes is saying here, uh, let me just quickly. Forbes is saying that Tableau, it, it is the rise in demand. Okay, anyway, they put you 10 technical skills with the explosive growth in the job demand. Okay, so our, our, what are we trying here? We're trying, we're trying to give you skills that you have it, you get a job. Do you get it? So if Forbes, some of you know Forbes, um, uh, I believe everyone in the, in the room know Forbes. Okay, Forbes. 
uh, just to be sure who is these guys are for us. Okay. So uh, Forbes is an American business magazine. Okay. Forbes is in an American uh, business magazine, Business Weekly, that features original articles on finance, industry, investing, and marketing topics. Forbes also report on a related topics such as technology, communication, science, politics, and law. Okay, the chief is Steve Forbes. You know this guy. Uh, check, check how much he got. Um, uh, and and uh, if they got your name, if Forbes got your name published saying you're a billionaire, saying it is a, you're a, you're a, you're a multi-millionaire, saying something about you, Philip, or David, or, 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 uh, or Gaston, myself, okay? Or whoever you are, if Forbes says something about you, why I'm drawing in this, it, it is the fact, it is a fact. They do a lot of research before they publish something, okay? So if they say that the 10 technical skills with explosive growth in job demand, all right, and which, which skills are, which skills are they? So they say here, we are revealing, guys, I'm reading from here. Okay, in this post, we are revealing the top 10 technical skills they ranked by how often they appear in job description, the, the category and, and in parentheses and how the type of job where increase took place. Now you might be thinking like, how, when was this? It started in 2017. So it's been for two years. Two years is very, very recent. Two years, these things got started is, is very hard. So, so technical skills with the biggest increase in demand. You are reading it. So um, uh, this is big data, okay? These things I was reading for you, big data. <laughs> it, 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 it's particularly in every industry, okay? In health, in oil and gas, in telecommunication, okay? In uh, banking, okay? Education, government. Okay, they say that is actually number one. Every organization is crying for the kind of data they have, and they want to know about this data. Forbes is saying that big data actually rank number one. Okay, I'm not here talking, you can read it here, okay? So number two is this not just, we're not teaching you this guy, but we'll teach you the, the number one. If I was you, I should, I, I want to know what is all about. How can I take advantage of this? We'll teach you this. Tableau. They say Tableau, it, it ranks third in analytics, in analysis, research and analysis. If I was you, you're doing your PhD on whatever, you can keep doing that, doesn't matter. But then what if you add this onto your, onto what are you doing? Can this add a value to your personal uh, role or personal, you know, make you value? Of course, yes. Because it, it is what is going on, what is trending right now. You guys know me, I've done masters in something, something slightly to do with the data, but all of a sudden, I'm using data every day. day every day. It's like a pen and paper. Okay. So, um, what, what I was trying to say it, it is that the Forbes is giving you these skills. Okay. And uh, we'll teach you this. We'll teach you Python. We'll teach you um, uh, uh, this top stuff so that you can get add value to yourself and be ready for, for, uh, for, the, for the bigger things uh, for, your, for your life. Okay, so somebody's gonna say, well, we know, we know, we know uh, folks, they always talked about things in America, in Europe, data science, this is, this is not, this is possibly not something for us because I'm talking to the audience, which is you and, and, and you are in Nigeria, okay? What about this? data science job in Nigeria, okay? You just can Google it, you, you, you go ahead and Google it, okay? If I'm bringing something to you, TCR resource technology will bring something to you, 
we are we have done our research and we found out that this it can change our community this can change the 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 status of our people all right so so watch this i just grabbed these things i said data science job in nigeria and i currently got about 47 just on this one here okay 47 um you can say this common nelson company in nigeria lagos this has been published two days ago full time they want full time guys uh data lead scientists uh when was this this is eight days ago and again it is um uh oh shoki nigeria you guys know what where, where this city is uh again you got another one manager data science recruitment and again this is lagos okay so you can go on okay uh somebody trying to speak uh i'll take question at the end please uh adio samuel you trying to speak please i'll take question at the end so write your question and i would like you possibly to put it in a chat uh our guys our team is on the ground please type the question on the chat box uh, that would be good for me to read it and then answer so uh, let me carry on give you deliver giving values that's this is that's what it's all about okay fantastic so um you you, you can you can come here read it okay read this job data analyst okay in lagos this one another one month ago is sitting there no one is taking it okay um data analyst company na 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 analytic gathering cons cons consumer data from enterprise and and break down important information into useful data for business improvement told you i told you i told you already because they have this data or they are capturing it they want to improve something they just want junior data analysts junior you can go to, after this you probably can can approach these people after six weeks i can i i guarantee you because uh, some of you are going to show up two, three, four people, these people definitely will interview you. You tell them, um, I've been trained by TC Research Technology in the UK. I worked with the project, live project. You tell them live project, give me data. You tell them, give me data. Before they're asking you uh, how many years you got experience on all of that, at, at least two years. You tell them, no, give me data. Give me data. Because it doesn't matter how many experience you have, if they give you data, let them give you data and plug that data in what? In Tableau or in Python or in SQL. Tell them, what do you want me to do with the data? Tell them, you ask them, what do you want me to do, to do with the data? They're gonna say, ah, oh, we, we wanna know the analytics. We wanna know some correlation. We wanna know what, what can we do with this data? <laughs> and you see right there in the office, and you, you can plug this thing and start playing with the data exploration that we will teach you, all of that, okay? And then boom, they say, how long? If they put it two years, uh, at the most two years, they put two years here, okay? They're gonna come back and say, how many years do you think, do you say do you have? Don't tell them how many years. You say, I've been doing this life. I've trained in a job, I worked in a job. If can I do it, that's what I just, demonstrated for you okay so it, it is matters the one year or two years doesn't matter doesn't matter so in the uk here that's what they do they ask you can you do it okay do you know how to do this they're not bothering about your certificate no one asked me my certificate nobody asked me my certificate i've done the test i passed the test they say, this is your job. What time, when do you want to start? I say, well, you give me two weeks. They say, no, we want you now. Can you start tomorrow? I'm telling you, I'm serious about this. Yeah. So uh, this is it. This is it. So you are not going to convince me. I'm convincing you that right there in Nigeria, you can get a job. And you're going to do the job with us, our project that we are planning for you, life. You will do it remotely, okay? Ask our guys. 
some of them already on the ground with you. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna be doing join the project remotely, and then uh, you're doing distance. You you finish that, you you've done a project. Okay, digital project or data science project or you know something to do with the data, and you can do it. Data and, and, and advanced analytics. Okay, click on this. Boom. What are they saying? Partner especially data advanced analytics. Advanced analytics. Okay, Microsoft Nigeria. No, 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 no. Skills Association. We believe that we bring them all the Microsoft uh, for a rich, rewarding career and the lifestyle. We will surprise you with a great potential. Just imagine the extremely satisfaction. They are talking, they don't have data scientists. They don't have, they're just advertising this, this job. We are training you on a job and we tell you, we push you to go and call them. If you want, I can give you the telephone number because I've done a lot of research on these guys. Okay, I actually, I actually register as a person on their platform. They're sending me job in a daily basis, monthly basis. Sometimes, actually, I send, I forward many, many of the things to our CEO. They, they are telling me that even if they actually found out that I'm in the UK, and they say, if, if, even if you don't want the job, you give us people, we pay you. And I said, uh, well, it is, not the, it is not the $100 they're going to pay me that, that motivates me. No, no, that's not, what, that, that's not my motivation. What I'm sharing with you, it means that there are jobs that do exist in Nigeria. Nobody has the skills to show up in these offices. And we want you from the, your university, from, with your uh, conventional, conventional um, academic uh, uh, knowledge, you add value with this and you show up, you have no competition. This is, this is my guarantee. You have no competition. Because this job's been there for, for, for months. This year, two days ago. This one here, just two days ago. Okay? And you keep going on and on and on and on. Okay? Keep going on and on and on. And, 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 and then uh, let me show you. Um, let me go back here. Yeah. So another one here, 69 data science job in, in Nigeria. Okay? Okay? So... Uh, uh, you can you can Google them and 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 because um, I'm a data guy. You get it? I'm not just sitting here talking to you. Uh, I will show you the facts because that's all it matters. You 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 can prove to the company is the facts. Okay. So so guys, are you ready? Can we do something now? Can we go and do data? Show me data. <laughs> that's what we say. Show me. You show me data now. Okay. So I'm going to show you a data. I'm going to show you data. So we're going to use some a tableau. Tableau, it, it is a, a you, you've, you've seen. Forbes rank tableau third, okay? Third in, in, the, in the skills, okay? If, 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 um, if, if they talk about you, like I'm, I was saying earlier, boy, you got to be somebody, okay? <laughs> so tableau is a data visualization tool created by Tableau Software. Tableau data visualization, it, it is the process of visually showing information. Mm, that sounds good. People have tendency to gain insight from data quicker using visuals versus putting through huge amount of data. That's why they love data. That's why they love Tableau, because Tableau is presenting you know, analytic in, in visuals. It's like a pictures, okay? pictures. You turn the data in pictures. Hmm. That's what they want. It makes sense to them. This CEO, like I told you, are not data scientists, are not mathematicians, uh, needed technical guys. So you're going to keep it simple. That's where Tableau comes in. Tableau comes in, making things simple. And, 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 and uh, you got it. So today, if you have already used Tableau, well done. If you haven't yet used Tableau, today I'm giving you the software that you need to download. And also I'm going to give you a data set that you take it away and do some practice. Within the six weeks, we're going to do a lot. This is a marathon. 
um, if you've seen your, your, um, your uh, timetable, I've been given, I've been given two hours. That's, that seems serious. <laughs> seems serious. So you got to be serious. If you want to serious, you're serious with me, um, you will love it because it, it is, it takes, it takes um, hours to, to, to get something out of data. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, we're going to do some practice and then uh, you'll see how, how fantastic this could be. Okay. Where should I give this to you? You tell me. This software now, I want to give it to you. You tell me where should I send this to you. But my first option is going to be on a chart here. What do you think about that? I'm going to drop it in a chart, chart on these things here. Um, I'm dropping it in the chat here. So uh, our guys on the ground there can get it out for you. Okay, I'm sending this to everybody. Okay, so boom, there you go. It's on the chat. So this, it, it is what you need. And once you have it, it's going to look like this. I'm going to drop it out here as well so they can see it. Boom. It looks like this. It looks like this. All you got to do, give them your email. Okay. Now you're giving them email. You, they got your data. <laughs> you started giving them data. Okay. Uh, somebody's trying to help. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, I, 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 Dara, I, Dara is saying thank you. Yeah. You're welcome, sir. I, uh, it's my pleasure and it's an, an excitement when we come in, you see, we, all of us, we've been to the traditional school. They fool us. They give us certificate. We spent three years, four years, yet you come out with no experience, no job experience. Don't try to convince me, and tell me that your university is giving you experience. They're not. They're not. Likewise, my, my university, I spent four, five years. They did not give me any experience. Yeah. But they give me a certificate, a master's, a degree, all of that. They give it to me. I pay them thousands and thousands of pounds. When I, well, I, I'm happy that I, I, at least I got a job at the end, but they did not give me any project. No project whatsoever. Yeah. So um, we are going to do life project life this is what makes us different we're not we're not saying that university is not good no that's not what i'm saying uh, that's not what i'm saying i've been to university okay so uh, don't try to say that god doesn't say something against the university no university it, it is a place to go fine but then after that with the new technology with the new knowledge you got to add more value to yourself it's called personal development if you want to call it yeah so I spend money on personal development and, um, and uh, uh, with your conventional university education, you are ready because this is, this is, this is now, this is now fast because it would take you years, three, four years, five years at a university to get something, to get a certificate or get you know, knowledge and things like that with no experience. But this, it is just a moment, it's a matter of months, and you are working life project. You're doing real, what we call it, a real world project, okay? So, um, and uh, uh, that's what makes a difference. So we're gonna do something here. Give them email address, okay? You put your email over here, and then click download. So once you download the software, this it is the most expensive software in the world okay i can guarantee you that but why is it free it's because your data is going to be public that's the only difference <laughs> that's the only difference so um if you come here uh trying to say uh sign in i'm going to click sign in i'm going to click sign in so that you see what i'm talking about here Tablet is very expensive. Uh, don't, this is the one I'm giving you here. It, it is a public. It, it is because your data going to be public. But the company, they don't want the data to be public. And Tablet say, good, 
So you're going to pay for. You pay for, and the people who learn data will work for you. Okay? So I have get involved. This is some of the teaching, but some of the project, real project uh, that I, we teach, okay, at TC Resource Technology. Um, and this is my profile. Okay? So your profile is going to be like this. Give them your your um, your email and then register public so anybody can see this you know i got about i did about 82 visualization okay we call visualization they call it v's okay or project if you want to okay so this is how you're going to do it and if they ask you uh have you ever done done anything like this before on tableau or something like that give them your profile say please check me this is my Tableau profile, Tableau public profile. Company, they know what you're talking about. Yeah. So it is not like university, they ask you, what experience do you have? And you're trying to show them a certificate. No, 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 no. This one, show them what you have done. Um, data. Give me data. That's what I mean. Give me data. And, and you show them. Boom. They say, hmm. So actually, you use Tableau. They say, I told you. I've told you. I've used Tableau. I've used Python, I've used my SQL. Uh, should I show you my SQL profile here? Just a moment. Uh, uh, so this is one of them. Well, for today, we're gonna do Tableau, okay? So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to something else. So download this, keep it, okay? And we're gonna do something about it. What are we gonna do about it? We're gonna do now. Uh, guys, let me know uh, the time, because, um, We'll check the time. Okay, so now that you got Tableau, download it, give them, give them your email and your, that's it, boom, registered, and you got your public. I will show you later down the line how you're going to, um, how you're going to customize your Tableau profile and all of that. Uh, and the one we're going to do today, you will save it there already, and uh, boom. So uh, yeah, about more about me, you know, talk about yourself. Um, there is one guy called Philip. I'm not sure whether he's here. Uh, this is what we call action takers. Um, I'm not sure uh, he's here, but uh, let me see TC Resource Technology. Just um, TC Resource Technology. Okay, CRT. -C -C Okay, so just a quick one. Uh, I'm gonna show you. And um, okay, okay, to see resource technology, boom. Because you gotta take action. Okay, uh, actions matters. If if I'm giving you credibility, uh, Lasso is big university. You coming from Lasso? All of this. And if you don't take action, if you don't download it right now, <laughs> you, you haven't taken action, nothing's gonna happen. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm trying. So this guy called Philip, okay? It was yesterday, it was yesterday. I'm actually from on this, uh, our company page currently. It was yesterday. He dropped it, it's about 13 hours ago. That was yesterday student at, at Lagos State University. He called himself data analyst already. That's the attitude you must have. That's the attitude you must have. You want to do something, you call yourself. You, you call whatever you call, that's what they call you. How do I know his name is Philip? Because he called himself Philip. Or he called himself a booker, okay? And also he say he's a data analyst, right? And they say, attending the TC Resource Technology, uh, TCRT, induction and, and, and accreditation of the uh, BI and the data management program, it is going to be an insightful six weeks of data science, just what I've been waiting for at last week. You gotta be have, uh, you gotta be this kind, of, this kind of attitude. You can do anything, you can do anything. You can do anything. Yeah. So we actually reshare his post. Um, 
Uh, and and uh, uh, what, I, what I mean by that, I, I, I mean, uh, you, can, you can like this now. You can go and click this like. You can drive traffic to this. So we are data people. We know what it is like. Somebody click like. Somebody, if somebody click this thing, we know what that means, okay? So I logged in here. Watch this. I'm going to click this. I click this. So add third person. The algorithm start training. This post start training, okay? Just for tests, just for give you the flavor of what we talk about data, okay? Or what we talk about uh, trending, okay? So you guys go literally in here. You see resource technology. I can drop you this here in the chat if you don't, uh, if you think trying to find out where it is and all of that. I'm dropping this, our, our um, uh, LinkedIn URL to everybody is in the chat right now. Boom, there. And just, just, just click like. Why do you do that? I'm just demonstrating the power of data. What is this can do? Okay. So if you come here, um, this is not. This is this is what action takers. We call these people. Action, massive action takers. You can, you can, you can do anything. You can do anything when you take action. So um, I believe you guys are are um, are downloading the the are downloading this uh, this this tableau right now. Go there. This is this is what we say here. We also posted this two hours ago. Okay, our team on the ground at Lasso University. Uh, in September last month to present. No, no, no. Okay, guys, this is live demonstration uh, of the data. How much is going now? Just two hours ago. Just two hours ago. Okay. I personally actually did this two hours ago. Okay. It's trending. Go and click like. I'm, I'm doing this. Put it in there. It's called data. We will teach you down the line what it is all about, you know. The people who brought the word data science, they work for LinkedIn. It's called Dr. Patel, okay? He's an American, Indian American guy. The word data science started just 2008. And it started on this platform, LinkedIn and Facebook. They work for Facebook and LinkedIn. They are, they are mathematicians and, 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 uh, and, uh, and they turn this world around. They just created one word, that is worth billions, right? And the simple things like that. And you, you're seeing there, you say, well, well, well why is the technical director is talking? Uh, why should I do this? Because you, you're not taking action. And if you do, you're taking action, just like a Philip. This guy, yesterday, <laughs> he just attended this and went, uh, went ahead and dropped this, boom, himself, on his profile, okay? So I got it out and then bang it here. And it's not, I didn't need to share it, but put it actually in a, in a, in a platform to, to, to demonstrate how people could take action, how, how quick people take action and how some people do not take action. It was not one person. There were many yesterday. I was there. Good. So guys, let's back, let's go back to business. Show me data. That's what I want. Show me data. Okay. So, so we, we are here, I've given you the, the software, okay? And we're gonna stimulate this, it's like this. Okay, you are a data scientist. They call you data scientist, good. They call you data analyst, good, okay? No problem whatsoever. It depends on how of the task they give you and they can literally call you based on what they think you are data analyst or data scientist, okay? But it's the same thing, okay? As long as you're dealing with the data, you're a data scientist. As long as you're dealing with the data, it is called a data science. It is not called, it doesn't call data analyst or anything like that. Data analyst is a role. Data scientist, it is a role. But data science is a name. Uh, I, hope, I hope you're getting it. Okay. So guys, so what are we going to do right now? You are a data scientist or data analyst working for e-commerce company. You have been given a list of transactions for the U.S. superstore. Okay, so they give you this data. 
I'm going to give you the data now. How I'm going to give you this? Let me just read their, uh, their question first. Okay, they say, you've been asked, so they're asking you, can you quickly tell us what are the most profitable and least profitable and least profitable of state using Tableau software? Okay, tell us, tell us the most, tell us the most profitable and least profitable states, state, okay, using Tableau software. Good. So, so um, they give you transactions, uh, they give you the data and they're asking you, please tell us, tell us what are the state, the most profitable and not most profitable for, for uh, marketing purposes. We want to know which state is making profit and which state is not making profit. This is obvious. They're not sure where the money is going out or where the money is coming in. I mean, where they're losing money and where they're making money. That's what the company are, are facing. They're not sure. The marketing team are the guys that run ads, okay? They run ads, PPC, okay, pay-per-click. They run a lot of pay-per-click, okay? And then they do their optimizations. Yet, these guys are not data scientists or data analysts. They're marketers. <laughs> they're marketers. So their eyes is based on on, on, on uh, what we call it um, an, uh, an optimization. And then they can, uh, they're gonna see, if the metrics, when we, we talk about metrics, uh, some of the metrics, uh, if it's a low, which means good. If it's a high, it is not good. But they cannot, they cannot do any predictions. They cannot, um, with precisions, to say, this state making losing money on all of that. They can't tell it yet. Okay, and that's where you come in. in. They have marketers. They have digital marketers, baby, they have them. And yet they're bringing you in to do some predictions and analysis and analytics and all of that. Okay, let's talk and show me data, show me data. So I'm gonna go right away in the chart here, in the chart, okay, in this chart, and I'm gonna drop you the data set. Uh, because this is, this is, this is, oh, this will not, this will not uh, upload the data. Ah. I can drop something there, but you cannot. Let me see if you can upload data. Okay, allowed. No, 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 no. Okay, guys, it's not, you can't upload the data here. You can't upload the data, but you can copy and paste, unfortunately. Not a problem, but uh, I will get the data set to uh, our guys that are on the ground right there for you to play with it. Okay, so let's, let's look at this. This is a Tableau software that I just given to you. I've got it here. Okay, I'm opening mine. Boom. This is it. I've got it here. Okay, so uh, how do I know that I got this Tableau here? It's here. It's here. I was telling, telling you that it's very, very, it's the most expensive, it's one of the most expensive software to use it because they invested a lot of money to code. They've done all the coding. You don't need coding to use Tableau, okay? But you need to be taught about analytics, okay? Dro drop and drag and things like that, okay? It's very, very effective, very powerful, okay? But you don't need coding. You don't need a programming language or whatsoever. Okay, we teach you this. And um, after when you finish this program, I want you to go and knock at that door. That I'm a data scientist, I'm a data analyst. Uh, I'll give you a list of all of these jobs. Go on and knock and they recruit you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and then click this. Uh, so you can connect Microsoft Excel. Text file is the CSV extension, JSONs, a PDF. Okay, uh, spatial statistics and all of this. For today, uh, I believe that 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 files is uh, is Excel. So in Excel, you're gonna click on Microsoft Excel. So I'm clicking on Microsoft Excel. Boom. I click it. Okay. So uh, where is it? Where is it? I I think I saved it in uh, this place. Okay, called Superstore. So I'm scrolling down to see if there is a Superstore. Superstore. 
doesn't look like that is superstore here. Um, okay. Okay, good. So let me go back in data science. Could be here. Superstore. US Superstore. Okay, so I can see here. Superstore, okay, US 2015. I've saved it in a folder called Data Science, okay? Um, all I need to do, select it and then open it, boom. Watch this. This is it. Tableau just got that data in here now. I'm, I got it here. This is where you're gonna start. You ask them, give me data. They give you data, ask them, uh, they, Tableau, they have it or not. You have it on your device. You already have it on your, tab, uh, on your laptop, okay? So watch this. We're gonna do this live, guys. We're gonna do this live. This can take um, uh, weeks of job or weeks of time for, for, for you to do it, okay? But um, we're, gonna do, we're gonna do this way. We're gonna do this way so they can see how powerful it is. Okay, so this is your, we, we're probably gonna come in, in, in one day and do this quickly, but this is, this is, um, this is um, uh, a live things that you can see here. So all the instruction that I will be using, it is just a bullet point, okay? So uh, after all, you're gonna have, you're gonna have uh, what we're gonna give it to you anyway. You will have the video, and then you will have this. So, so you're a data analyst or data scientist working for this large retail company, and you've been, you've been given a list of transactions, Superstore 2015, okay? A question has been asked, can you quickly tell us what are the most profitable and the least profitable of the state according to this transaction to make an informed decision for a marketing purposes? They realize there's a marketing team making a lot of money, um, uh, use spending a lot of money on on ads okay a campaign and then they want to know which state is making money and which state is not making money okay so this is the question create a map okay they want you to create a map create a map and show us the state that are performing hmm. this is this sounds like a big job this sounds like big tasks they want you to create a map and show us how the states are performing. Second question. So we now want to connect that data set to the Tableau. Okay. So connecting data, that's what I just connected right now. I've just connected that data to the Tableau right now currently. Boom. I got it in there. Fantastic. What else? Um, they're saying that, uh, okay, what we want to do, we want to drag and drop orders to the Canva, okay, uh, to view and analyze it. Okay, orders. Where, how do I know that orders supposed to be something that I should be interested to drag and drop it here? Now I will be teaching you the analytics down the line, but let me give you a bit. When you are working with e com company, all they're interested, the, the, the signal is going to be in orders. Okay, the orders will have somebody's name, the orders will have somebody's amount of money the orders will have somebody addressed on it okay so i'm teaching you now the analytics the analytic mind okay if you are dealing with the medical medical uh, data you are looking into the uh, prescriptions okay prescription will have somebody's name on it prescription will have somebody's telephone number on it or possibly somebody addressed on it a prescription will have uh, somebody's. Um, you tell me, because you guys. Uh, Hello. Hello, yeah. technical director. Yes. Sorry. Sir. Well, just a second. Let me just borrow two minutes from this. Okay. Please. Good. Go ahead, sir. There are students who are in Lasso. I understand that some of you are taking pictures of our slide. Please don't do that. We have told you yesterday that we will send you the recording, and we'll make available some things for you. How many slides are you going to take for the next few weeks? Please don't do that. Listen to the monitors in, in, in there, whatever they are telling you. Don't do that. Don't project because in the course of your six weeks, 
there will be some regulators that will be checking what we're doing. So please, let's just sit down and enjoy the lecture. There will be so many downloads we'll give you. We are working at giving you a content. I'm sure you know what is called intellectual, uh, intellectual properties. At this point, please don't take our slide. Don't take our, our slide pictures. We will make things available for you, but you need to promise us that things are going to be orderly. Please. Thank you. Technical director, please. Over okay. Time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Awesome. So, guys, um, uh, likewise, if you're dealing with, um, we will teach you any data has got uh, uh, variables that it is important. Not all variables, but some of the variables are very, very important that you will pay attention to. Okay, so this is the e com. Okay, e commerce. Um, if you got the variable orders, uh, uh, it's important variables. Okay, so what we want to do, watch this, drag and drop it here. This place, we call it Canva or we call it like a workspace. Okay, drag and drop it. Boom. Watch this. There you go. So is is literally Tableau bring the data like this. This is the data I want to send it to you. We want to get somebody who is on the ground there uh, so that we give the data set, this data set for you to practice. Okay. I was thinking I'm going to drop it right now live, but this, this, uh, this Zoom uh, will, uh, does not have uh, like a load. I can copy and paste, but does not have like loading. So uh, bear with us. Um, we'll give you that right, the data set itself. I uh, will give you, right, actually, once you join us fully, uh, we got a portal that will just give you the URL and, and you have it, you have it. Boy, you have the old kind of data set, okay? So, boom, we got orders in there. You got orders in, in, in here. So what else, what else can we do, okay? We drag orders to the Canva to view and analyze it. Let's create a new sheet to analyze and visualize. Oh, create a new sheet. Sounds like a big task, okay? Create. When you talk about creating things, sounds like big things. In Tableau, create a new sheet. This is the guy, sheet one. That's all you gotta do, boom. That's it, you've created, just like that. Literally this, it will take you like five, 10 minutes, but I have to slow down. I have to take you through. It's the new technology. It's like when you first time driving a car, okay? You're thinking like, is it true? If I press this, it's gonna move and all of that. This is exactly the process here. It's very easy, but then I have to give it that confidence and it take a while to explain. So this, what you gotta do, create this new shit. It seems like a, a lot of job, okay? Or, or it's gonna take a lot of thinking. It's a click a button and you created it. Boom, we have it. What else can you do, okay? We wanna add a state. Okay, we want to add state. We just got, we just create this, this things called um, uh, 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 create. Okay, where we are, we, we, we done this, we create a new sheet. Okay, and then we now want to create map. Remember they asked you to create a map. Okay, map, think you guys have done geography. Okay, uh, and if you're going to sit down to, 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 to use your, your traditional or your conventional uh, knowledge to create a United States map with the states in it. I think this is big. This will take, this will take you a long time to do that. But what will this software will do, create a map and drag and drop country to the canvas. Uh, we want to create a map and by dragging, uh, 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 all we want to do is just dragging country to the canvas. Okay, so countries this is the place this is the new shit we've created all we gotta do these things here called country okay they want you they told you to create create map and you can see literally there has got this logo with gloves in it you drag it and you drop it here boom watch this watch this and tableau knows that is coming from united states and he plugged the United States right there. How genius is that? If your data coming from, 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 uh, from Nigeria, it will recognize it's in Nigeria. 
if your if your data is coming from United Kingdom, you will recognize your data is coming from United Kingdom. Okay, somebody is asking question. If it's um okay. Um yeah, I will I'll be finished maybe in next 10 minutes. Next 10 minutes. Next 10, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, yeah, maximum. Okay, good. So now we drag and drop it um, based on the time, guys. If you allow me to speed it up a little bit, then that's fine. Okay, so we drag a country to the canvas. We want to add a state because they're interesting to know which state is performing, okay? Which state is making money? Which state is losing money? So we're going to come here and then drag states. When you drag and drop country here, if it does not recognize it, then uh, let me know because sometimes Tableau may not know, and you're gonna help Tableau to tell Tableau that this is coming from United States. Uh, uh, message me or message our group, message me directly, and I can help you how to tell Tableau that you're gonna do what we call setting, and you're gonna tell Tableau that this is coming from US. And Tableau say, mm, aha, now I know it. Okay, so we wanna get this uh, state, province, okay, state and province. Watch this, we're gonna drop it, everything just drop it here, boom. You plot all the state. So you can tell how, how, um, how powerful that is. So um, they wanna know which state is making profit and which state is not making profit. So profit here, we're interested in profit. So we wanna, wanna drag and drop profit to the color and also drag profit to the label. This sounds like a, a uh, uh, like, uh, like a big deal here. So this is what you want to know. This, which state is making profit and which state is not making profit. So to distinguish this, you want to drag profit, drop it to the color. Boom, watch this. And then come back and drag the same profit to the label. You want to know the numbers. Which numbers are they? Are they positive? Are they negative? How much is it to the label? Boom. Guys, you're doing something that it will take you how many time, I'm not sure, but then Tableau quickly already has done this job. What else can you do about it? Okay, so let's click labels and then uh, we can do some formatting, okay? So formatting, we can do some formatting here. Uh, looks like it's small and we can do some formatting a little bit, okay? If you think it, it, is, a, it, it is a tiny, a little bit from now nine font, you can, you can actually change this nine you can change it maybe to 12 or 11 boom looking good this is it this is it just like that and uh, you can do some formatting some more formatting like uh, we're gonna come on the sum here and then do some formatting boom click on formatting and this looks like uh, is, a, is a dollar okay they want it in money it comes like a numbers so we're gonna come here in numbers here okay numbers uh currency Okay, currency, currency custom. Okay, it's, it, it recognize, it pull it like a pound. I'm gonna say, hey, uh, this thing is coming from, from US, please, I want dollar. There, boom, just you got it, just like that. There you go. So this is it, and, 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 and based on this, can you tell me, they, I wanna know which state is making profit, which state is not ma making profit. You tell me which state is losing, which state is making a lot of money. You can tell me. If you can, I believe you're watching my, my screen. Tell me. I just want somebody, random people just in the, in the audience to tell me which state is making money and which state is losing money. So losing and making money, uh, that's where your numbers comes in. That's where your analytic comes in, right? So um, any volunteer? Any volunteer in the audience? Otherwise, I'll, I'll just tell you what is, what is it, okay? Any volunteer to tell us which state is making money? Okay, this is Montana. Can you see it? Montana is there. Uh, this is California. Okay, negative figure, already they're losing money. Any negative figure that they're losing money. Any, any that has got you can see from the red is a negative and the green, the blue, the darker the blue color, the better that state is making money, okay? 
So this is it. Um, I, I believe uh, the time, um, uh, our time is up, but then I want to quickly tell something called storytelling, okay? Storytelling, it is when actually you don't want just to leave it like this, okay? You can leave it like this, fine. They might move it and around, but why can't, if you can do something else, we call it storytelling, okay? So you're going to add these things like this, and then, um, uh, okay, we can actually give it a name, okay? So we're going to, you're going to, somebody trying to help already? Okay, Montana is making most losses, correct. Uh, that's a Suleiman. Suleiman, you're right there. Suleiman is saying Montana is making the most losses. <laughs> you're right, sir. Uh, who else? Just, 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 just take action, man. Take action and, and see, see what you can, co you can contribute. Yeah, you can contribute, you can do. Yeah, um, Senapon is saying that uh, California is making the money while Montana is losing. You're perfectly right. You are perfectly right, Senapon, uh, Moyo, Friday. You're right, sir. Um, and then uh, Lasso, it, it is the Lasso CD is saying, CDC is saying that based on the example you gave using Tableau, we are going to be provided with the necessary data needed to create our big data. Obviously, yes. We'll give you software, the Tableau. I've just given you already. We we'll give you the data set. We'll give you the data set to, to, um, to uh, I'll give you the data set today. I wanted to give you already, but um, Zoom is not, allow me to upload so we'll give our team on the ground to give you the to get access to the data set to give it to you and you lasso have data and you can take your data whether in excel or in a csv file and drop it and upload it in this tablet software that i just given to you and we will be teaching you about analytics okay this is where you're coming in that's this is where you're coming in you come in i just shown you if you're dealing with the medical you are interested in prescription. If you're dealing with, um, with the e-com data like this, interested in data set on orders and things like that. If, you, if you're dealing with, um, with the students, you're gonna, you're gonna talk about, you will be interested in, 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 in uh, admissions, uh, pass or fails. <laughs> which doesn't pass, which doesn't fail. What about, why did he fail? You got it? Why did he fail? What, how, how come he did he pass? These are the variables that you will be interested. You guys, we will teach you within a couple of six weeks. You come out, you, you're a different person. Your name remain the same. Your, may, your name remain the same, but you're a different person, totally different person. So, okay, fantastic. All right, great, Lo, let's, let's finish this. Let's finish this guy. So uh, we can call this, um, we can call this uh, report. We're gonna rename it like, uh, a state report or something like that. Okay, you tell me what we can give this um, report. Okay, we can call these things like report. Uh, okay, report for states, something like that. State report or something like this. Okay, report state analytics report. How that? How how is that? Uh, state states. Okay, report analytics. How's that? analytics i like it just like that boom so state um uh report analytics so we want to do something that we call it uh these things called storytelling and we want to drag this guy boom over here okay so caption one boom so you already know you were giving me the report already you guys just gave me the analytics what we call these things so looking at the data visualization in Montana performed badly. Some of you already say that Montana was the one lost a lot of money. You're right, you're totally right. And we're gonna come here and say, boom, that's it. And then we wanna duplicate, duplicate these things. And we wanna call these things. Uh, and then next we wanna say, um, uh, okay, badly they lost. Okay, maybe we can, we can add these things, okay? That's what actually they lost. That's the money actually they lost. And that's a lot of money to lose. That's a lot of money to lose. 
So they perform badly, okay? Uh, visualization, and a mountain I had, data visualization, mountain I had badly performed, badly performed, okay? And what is it? So, okay, so uh, we might make this thing a bit larger like this, okay? Boom, something like that. If when you do your storytelling, okay, at the glance, they can see straight what is happening. You don't want them trying to um, read and trying to read. Okay, so we got this. Uh, what else? What else? Secondly, we've got uh, we've got this North Cali, Cali, uh, Carolina. This guy, okay, they had made a loss of this much. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to lose. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna say these things like that. Okay, boom. We're gonna duplicate this. Okay. Um, uh, what else we can tell this this state had made that much of uh, stay muted. We are just about to finish. Uh some song. Stay muted. Thank you. So we gotta come here and we drop this boom okay this this look like uh okay what else four five that should be enough okay so the guy who actually made a lot of money uh, is this cali um, california okay california they made a, they made a good profit they made a good profit uh, they are the most actually made a profit and uh, okay, that's it. So looks looking good, looking good. And this is how you're gonna give to them. This is actually your presentation, and they can take a, just a, 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 a matter of a one, two, three minutes. They know everything that is going on. Okay. So this is how you do your you use your tableau. Uh, I think Constance, Constance, you are on video. Um, so, Constance, you are on video. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, this is it. And you can now publish it. You can now publish. And um, why are they duplicating for the story? board is a storytelling. This is a very intelligent question. It says someone, uh, Lasso CDC is asking, why are we duplicating the storyboard or storytelling? Um, very intelligent question. Yeah, this duplicate means that every time when you duplicate, you're changing things. Uh, this is, this remain not the same. The captions, uh, in order for you to have another one, you click duplicate and you change. This time around, you're gonna change. Look, this one here, by looking at the data visualization, Montana had badly performed. They lost a lot of money. But the second one is say, North Carolina had made a loss of 19,000. Okay, third one say, Pennsylvania had made, again, a loss of 1,000. And the uh, fifth one say, California had the most of profit with 30,000 something. So a caption here, you duplicate, uh, to give you another box to write something. Uh, I hope you get it. That's the only reason. So, uh, last uh, CDC, I, I believe this is a very intelligent question, which is, um, I just answered your question. Please, when do you finish? We are finished right now. We are finished. Uh, and any question, type it, type the question in, um, in, in the box, and then we're gonna answer your question. So thank you very much for your, uh, uh, for your time. And thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to show you uh, the kind of technology or the skills you needed in Nigeria currently now uh, to get, to, to, to pick up this job, because they are there. No one is showing up. No one except you until we, we train you and put you to this guy to go and take on this job. So thank you very much. Um, and then up to you, sir. Uh, the CEO, if you are still in the call.
Any question, guys? We need a question. Any question relating to the data visualization, data analytics using Tableau? I believe everyone already got, got the software. Um, and then uh, we just want to get the data set to you. Uh, can we have the data set sent to us via a Slack group uh, or Google Drive? Yeah, send me right now. I want to get it to give you right now. I've tried already, but um, uh, send me, type an email or group something, okay? Uh, and I can send it to you straight away. Aidera uh, Netou is asking the data set. I want to give you now so you can practice it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so data set had been previously labeled. This is this correct? Uh, the data set, uh, the data set I'm talking about here, it, it is, yeah, it's called US, a uh, Superstore US 2020, 2015. So that's the data set. Constance is saying that uh, how does Tableau recognize that selected data set is from USA. Yes, because there is the, IE, uh, the, the API, the day, the first day that is collected, uh, Tableau recognize it, okay? But if it does not recognize it, you will tell Tableau um, that this data is coming from US, okay? And how do you do that? You will click on unknown, it will show up as unknown, okay? Tableau say unknown. You currently, when you get this data, uh, constants, when you load to your Tableau, it's gonna say unknown. Do right click on that unknown and tell change and change the country, say state, United States, and boom, Tableau will recognize it and everything else would be just uh, nice and smooth going. Okay. Lasso CDC is asking, how can we get the data set in our email directly and not Zoom? No, email me. You just give me, one of you can just give us the email and I can load it straight from the company, um, uh, uh, from the from TC the Source Technology um, email to you, okay? Um, because you need that, is, that's, that's, that's how important it is. Like we told you, we're not, we're not here to give you a lecture and let you go home without doing nothing. Okay, good. So, so if I just send me this right now, and uh, boom, okay, I got it here. Okay. Okay, I got the email. Um, oh, we're just gonna give to one person. If, if one person can, can share it with you, I'm not gonna do all of this in this email. What do you think, guys? We're just gonna, if, if, you, if it's the case, um, I believe that would be, uh, there's a lot of emails coming up. Um, can you agree that the data set would be used uh, for practice purposes, okay? Because you got a software and you gotta, you gotta share this. If you have a group, I, I believe we got a group. Um, let me see here. Uh, so are you on a, on a, on a call here with us? Because I believe this student got a group. Uh, uh, Cortens, you are still on a video. Do you, tell me here, if you have a group, I can drop this data in the group straight away for you. Unmute yourselves, uh, Lasso CDC. Unmute yourself, let me know. Do you have a group like this? I can drop this data right in. The, the, anybody that is in the, the group can have it. Lasso CDC, you can unmute. I'm just, I just unmute you now. Let me know if you have a group, I can drop this. Otherwise, I'm just gonna email one person and then. There's a, there's a group to send it to. Do you have a WhatsApp group? Okay, what is the, um, uh, okay, just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. Okay, just a moment. Okay, WhatsApp, uh, I'm on WhatsApp. Guys, this is, um, this is technology, so we want you to have it right away uh, so that you can, um, you can use it. Just a moment. Uh, you will need to add him guys, your one. You'll be leaving his number. It's too fast. Open the group, let me see. 
Okay. So, guys. Um, Hello, technical data. Yes. Um, this charity on the call. Can you please share it with um, the director? The director is on the LCDC group, so he's going to um, interact with the group admin. Okay, great. Great. Awesome. So, I'm going to share with the director uh, on this last CDC. Okay, last CDC. CDC. Last CDC. Da, 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 da. Okay. But last CDC did not send me an email. Uh, the email came from Sanapon. The email came from Sula Sa Suleiman. Uh, the email came from, please, CDC, last CDC, can you please send me just an email so that I can attach this to you straight away? Uh, and then you can share with them. That would be fantastic. Any other question? Your questions are uh, due to the fact that someone has from the external campus. I might be hard to get the data. Ah, Suleiman is saying he's outside the campus. Please, the last CDC will share the data set with you because I believe without that data set, we want you to get your hands, um, get your hands dirty on, on practice. Okay. Uh, I've sent my email to personally to you to avoid spamming. Okay. Okay. Ibrahim saying that. Awesome. Okay. Ibrahim got my email. Good. All right. So I've got it. So last send me the email right now. So I'm getting this. Guys, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for now. Just one minute, one less than one minute. Okay. So, so I'm sending this to uh, Lasse from, uh, from the company. Okay. Uh, okay. Should I? Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. All right, so this is gonna be quick. I can just send it from here, not a problem. So, boom. Okay, I just, subject data set, just like that, data set, data set. So, boom. It's gone. Okay. So, all right. Uh, Superstore is gone. Superstore. <laughs> Boom, it's gone. Okay, so let's see the CDC, uh, the, the data set is gone uh, and, and uh, would, would, would appreciate, because it's so important, because this is, this is uh, like we said, it made it clear, uh, it, it is, it's a practical thing. So it is gone to you, um, share, it with, share the data set with, with, um, with the older group and share the software. The software, I believe everyone already has it, uh, download it. Um, so the video will be sent to you. You will know how actually to do the analytics. But the details of the other courses that are coming, we will be in a position to uh, give you more your hands on the analytics side of the big data. How actually you do, and this is this is all this is all about. So uh, I want to say thank you for all your question uh, that you just asked uh, and give me more. Um, uh, more, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the motivation, because these questions, how come just from day one, you're asking um, a very, very critical question, intelligent question like that, because of your level of education as well. Yeah, so that also matters. That's why I'm telling you that I'm not saying that going to uni is a bad thing. No, it's not. So it, it forms you, it gives you that what we call conventional mind of thinking, how to actually approach the person, how to ask questions. These are intelligent. So yeah. Thank you very much. Anything else?
um, up to the uh, CEO supposed to be in the call. Let me check if he's in the call. We have finished. Any question, keep typing uh, while I'm trying to get um, a sponsor uh, up here. Just a moment. What of this one? No, I don't say it. I just change this one from. I think it's to talk now and then. Okay, guys, uh, just spare with us. Um, a CEO is coming himself to um, to present general data protection. So uh, spare with us. Um, Yeah, any question? I can see some questions popping up. Okay. Do you, there's a question from Lasso CDC. Uh, how do you get the data anal analyzed by Tableau to your target stakeholders, to your target stakeholders? What is, how do you publish it? Fantastic. Uh, if I can answer this question quickly, uh, that would be good as well. That's very, see, that's why I love to work with you guys. Um, okay. So, so here there is, so I'm still here. Let me share my screen. Uh, the CEO is not here yet. Let me just quickly back here and then we can complete this, this, um, this, uh, uh, Michael, you are, you are, oh, Michael, yes, you are on the videos. So, um, please stay on audio. I'm sharing my screen. Boom. So guys, this is, this is this one here. Okay. And then we are saying that the last CDC is asking, how do you get this to your stakeholders? Okay, so we want to save this. Okay, we want to save this a state report analytics. This one here, you got two things here. You got the analytics and you got the storytelling. Okay, so we're gonna give this things name. We're gonna we're gonna call this like a, a state report analytics storytelling. Okay. So something like that, okay, or insight, okay. So state, state, uh, state report, state report insight, or storytelling, okay, insight, something like that. Boom, and you can now publish it. So you come here, and you're gonna click on guys. Uh, this is part of the training still. Uh, so you wanna click on files, and files. Next files, you're gonna say save to Tableau public as. Boom, click on that. Okay. Uh, and then it's asking you to um, enter your name, your email address. So my email address. So this is just done. And 
I'm putting these emails in and then my password. Okay, sign in. Watch this. Boom. And I'm going to call induction. Okay. So in your case, you're going to give it something else. Induction. Induction. Today induction. Something like that. Okay. Or let's see. Something like this. What is it? Okay, something like that. You know the kind of things you're giving, so you got to give it so that the, you you um, you 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 know the title. Okay, so boom, save, and watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. This is it. So state report analytics, boom, you have it here. So now that you have it here, your guys, you can send this as PDF to them, okay? The stakeholder, uh, last CDC, your question is in two segments. The first one, how do you get it to, how do you actually save it? Now you save it. From the software, now is on your profile, okay? is on your profile right now. And from this, you can now, you can now email them, okay? You can email uh, the person, you can download it, okay? You can download it, uh, or you can email them in a PDF, okay? Uh, so you can download it, these things like this, um, and it will be asking you what, what the way you wanna download it. Uh, uh, one second, it's taking you back here. So you can email them or you can e save it and email them in a PDF or add them, add them to, to um, we'll teach you about actually giving them power. Uh, CEO, you give him certain power. Uh, I mean, can he edit it? Can he come here and edit something? Can he do, can he do something else? And that depends because they're going to have the professional work. They're going to have the professional. So, uh, you give them, you give them, you give them power based on the rank. Okay, so, so this is how you do it. So you can just email them simply by PDF. Okay, so these things here will teach you how actually you're gonna you're gonna get these things as on PDF simply on PDF, and you you email you email them on PDF, or you can you can you can you can. You can on the on the on the profile actually. Uh, what we talked about, Tableau Professionals, is is um, is has got has got uh, has got who can you who can you give roles? Okay, uh, who can you add? Okay, the person that you add can he edit it? You give them power, you give them authority, and based on who you can give them authority. So this is how you do it. But then. Uh, they will tell you, no, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Just I want to receive the, re the report. And then you add him or you can email him straight away uh, and he can have it. This is how you do it. Um, so I answer your question right there. Give them this in PDF or in, in, uh, in, uh, in um, add them. You can share it. Okay. You can share it here. Who are you want to share with? So uh, you want to share it with this, this, you can share it here, uh, making sure you can get the person uh, uh, by saving this, by saving this, and, 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 and on your things, you're going to have all these people, how, which one do you want to share with them? Okay. So uh, do you want to share this? And then they say, yeah, you want to share this. So all of this document or, or this data, in the, the things that you shave them, you can share with these people, uh, choose which one you wanna share with. Hope I answer your question right there. But we'll teach you all of that. For now, save it, and the next thing, uh, we will show you how you're gonna email them, or we will show you actually how you're going to uh, just, just get it in PDF, okay? And then email them in a PDF. 
or you add them actually literally you add you add every uh, personnel to what you're doing and they know what is happening so they receive it in a weekly you're going to automate this as well you automate this once it's automated then they keep receiving it once the project has finished okay awesome awesome Okay. Okay. Uh, Senapon is saying this to stress more on the question asked by Lasso CDC. Uh, rapid, rapid miner is a data analytics tool that does almost the same function and as Tableau, maybe on Tableau, something like that. It does require a prior knowledge of any programming language. Why, why choose Tableau over kind of data analytic tools? Okay, yeah, because Tableau, it, it, you, you, you know, you know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't say anything, but you know, Forbes. So, <laughs> Forbes say Tableau is the best. You get it? If, if Forbes say you is a millionaire, multi-millionaire, billionaire, no, it is a fact. Okay, it's a fact. This, this, if you, if you look at the 10, 10 skills here, that, that name is not there. So that means they haven't scratched the surface yet. They haven't even started yet. Okay, and Tableau, it, it is Tableau already coded. They code, they already did the coding, and, and, and the way they've done it is they use SQL, uh, SQL programming language, they did it. And the way we'll train you is so powerful that you can crunch the data down. You can crunch big data down in a moment of time and present it just like that. So Forbes, it is not a small guy. These people are not small, okay? Um, and they say Tableau. So if I was you, I won't even bother talking about anything else. I will come right in here. I will look about big data. I will look about Tableau. I won't even bother look at something else because they tested, and it is not that they tested it, it is because um, the big company are looking for Tableau or are looking for big data, okay? Uh, even your Python is, is run seven, okay? So that's uh, Oracle eight. So, uh, uh, so it, it is because of the demand. Okay, it's because of the demand. That's the word, demand, demand. So if I quickly go back uh, to last uh, question, um, uh, does, does uh, rapid minor easy in demand? So my question is gonna be easy on demand. If it's not in demand, don't bother. Don't bother, because you're gonna you're gonna come here quickly. The things they're gonna ask you here. If I have time, I can open this job, each job, and tell you what exactly they're asking for. They're gonna talk about Python. They're gonna talk about Tableau. They're gonna talk about yeah, Python, Tableau, R. They're not gonna talk about this, this other things. So that's to answer your question. Go for the best. Okay, go for the best. Just like uh uh. Uh, Forbes is saying here, they, they choose the best, and that's why we, we teach you the best. Hope I answer your question right there. Any other question I'm trying to get? Because as 1.30, um, in four minutes, the CEO himself is going to be presenting the, the GDPR, but um, let me call again, trying to find. Keep, keep the question coming in. I like questions. Your questions are um, uh, very, very... Uh, very intelligent question. Keep them coming. Keep them coming and let me make a phone call, making sure that he's here as well. Could you please go over it for some second? Oh, okay. Um, where had the loaded the map information into Tableau? All right. So, map, you are looking into country, okay? So, when you say, when they say, give us a map, all you gotta do, you're looking for a country, okay? So, 
the country is, is here. So you drag and drop country, boom, to the Canva here, and something happened. So, okay. Hello, Tinder. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, I'm uh, I've finished. So uh, if you're ready, you can take over. Um, I've finished. Uh, any other questions, guys? Keep them coming in. Or our people, uh, our team is 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 with you. You can you can send it to to me, or you can post it on the group, on the WhatsApp group. Then I have a better time to answer all your questions. Thank you. So I have finished. Uh, I, I I finished. Thank you very much, um, everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Tech Director, and uh, I believe strongly that. Uh, I believe strongly that uh, you guys enjoyed the lecture so far. Uh, we were meant to have two more lectures, but I think at this point, we would limit it to just one more. But then, so far so good, I we want to, I want to confirm uh, 